We never really know what will hit big. The creators of The Simpsons probably thought it would be a short-lived show. Today, there's no end in sight. Was Bugs Bunny ever intended to be a beloved icon for the great grandkids of the first viewers? Was the Addams Family ever thought to be a Halloween staple? While I personally was introduced to the Addams Family through the television show and their guest spot on Scooby-Doo, the Addams originated in the comics of Charles Addams. I'm not an expert on this, but from my understanding, they were your typical newspaper comics. Single panels, jokes based on their weirdness, juxtaposed to something normal. You know, all that good stuff. Were they good? I don't know. I've never read them, but clearly something connected with audiences. Now, generally speaking, the Addams Family are a rich family that delights in gruesome things, which makes sense given the amount of people who tend to rewatch the show for Halloween. Definitely enough for channels to bring out reruns of that original show for the month, enough for the 90s films to get played again and again. The joke for the most part is that the Addams think of themselves as normal, but the people around them do not. It's a simple joke that works and can be viewed as an aristocrat's gag, at least the satirical aspect of an aristocrat joke. They're rich and do things that the middle class finds odd, but they themselves find it to be normal. It's been that way for a long time, but possibly due to the fans associating the family with horror and Halloween, we see newer iterations lean more towards the gruesome, which, while having been there early on, didn't feel like it was the whole of it. Go back to that original show. Sure, they did weird things, but compared to the of 90s films, which full disclosure, are fun, especially the sequel. It almost feels like the family of the former are the kind that would be scared of the Adams of the newer. It's like every new take wants to emphasize more of the monster and horror aspect of the family, which brings us to the recent animated feature. Now, personally, I've yet to see the movie as I write this, but I've heard mixed things. Some say it betrays the themes of the franchise by turning the family into outsiders rather than them believing they're normal. But others seem to feel it's a welcome addition. What I can say is that after some thought, it doesn't make sense to treat the Addams as outsiders. That's become the norm for movies focusing on monsters, and the Addams do get more monster-like with each passing iteration, it seems. So, I get where they got this idea from. In this movie, Wednesday apparently wants to see the world, which the Addams have been away from due to people persecuting their weirdness. This moves away from the idea that they assume they're normal and that other people are acting weird around them, but it makes some sense. As the Adams got more horrific in their acts and newer material, more fans came to like them for being weird and because it made them feel normal for their taste and violence. There's no denying a huge chunk of the modern fans are people who would normally be considered outsiders, be it for their taste, their race, anything. Seeing the Adams think of it as normal is easy to relate to and love, so making them cut off from the world to avoid hate was not an entirely bad way to update them. Or a wrong-headed way, anyway. Let's see how they did. Short answer, not bad. Long answer... Now up front, yes, the movie is not bad. I don't know if I'd say it's good, but there are good qualities to it, and especially in the most important parts. The Addams Family are great. The cast is solid, with Oscar Isaac as Gomez being perfect. The animation on them is definitely fun to look at, maybe not the most cutting edge, but the designs are lively and fun to watch. None of the jokes are laugh out loud, but they are good more often than not. But yes, a few reference gags are a bit annoying. They put the lime in the coconut. And drink them both up. But nothing I'd ding the movie for much, cause it's just throwaway lines. I don't know. Some people get really upset at stuff like this party's gonna be lit. <laughs> I mean I get annoyed by that, but if it's a small thing, I don't get too upset. Pop culture gag hate goes really overblown sometimes. Anyway, the B-plot involving Pugsy's Mazurka is pretty good and adds some culture to the family. Where the movie falters is largely on the A plot. Wednesday wants to see the world, but Gomez and especially Morticia think it's bad and dangerous because of how much people have attacked them before. As I said before, I get the idea of making the Adams outsiders, maybe even making it a metaphor for racism, but it never fully works here, because it still tries to make them believe that they're normal and assume other people are on the same page, when we, the audience, know they're not. It's kind of confusing whether the goal is updating them or just playing to the franchise strengths in that regard. What always worked in prior versions is the jokes of regular people, which were easy to make. Plus, it made it funnier when we'd see someone new, unaware of what the Adams are capable of, getting more than they bargained for. Even after some of the more aware people would try to warn the new person not to get involved with the Adams. Removing that element doesn't exactly make this movie less funny, but it also doesn't work to make things better. Most of the time, regular people are just scared by the Adams being weird, and aside from a bit involving a camera crew visiting their house, it just never amounts to much of those classic interactions. There's little in the way of buried reactions, and the buildup is 
missing, which ties back to the movie mistakenly choosing to make the Adams outsiders rather than just weird rich neighbors. I get the idea of the Adams family being turned into a metaphor for different people, respecting different ideals and beliefs, but it just doesn't gel with this franchise, at least it doesn't here. Especially since this movie still rarely lets them interact with normal people, and it reads like strange wealthy people intrigued by the poor and assuming it's the poor who are confused about normalcy. Why do that if they want them to be a metaphor for outsiders? This party's gonna be lit. But it's Wednesday's story where most of the film's confusion lies. She wants to explore the world, try new things, but she's also just a demented child. Sometimes she'll fight in ways that no girl her age would fight in, but then she'll want to fit in with the more colorful girls. At some point, we see Wednesday dressed in all pink, singing the Assimilation Town song, yet the town's name is Assimilation, but she's never fully interested in that lifestyle beyond observing it. So why does that happen? It's the driving force behind the main plot. Morticia is in constant fear of losing her, and even thinks she's gone too far wearing pink. But it never actually feels like Wednesday plans to leave her ghoulish side. It's creating obstacles and tension despite the character never really wanting it. Wednesday is not like Ariel in The Little Mermaid. Yes, she wants to venture out, but she's not exactly interested in what's out there. She's mostly just doing what she does, but with brighter people. So why have that Ariel and King tried in tension? It's weird because you do get a sense of a typical Adam story. Drop the stuff about her changing and just make it about Wednesday joining public school and f***ing with the kids. Which she does at one point and it would feel so much more like what we expect from the franchise. This party's gonna be lit. <laughs> the problems only continue with the society we see. The town of assimilation is supposed to be where we find the outsider team challenge. Here's these normal people for the Adams to feel like outsiders around, but the movie doesn't do anything with it. Again, it almost plays like the typical Adams family stuff. The Adams think they're normal, see others act differently, think they're the weird ones, which is fine, it's how it's supposed to be, but the movie is still trying to make the Adams feel like the outsiders. Wednesday still goes on as if there's something missing in her life, yearning while Morticia fears that normal people will attack them, and it's just weird because I should be happy the movie mostly gets them, but if they're gonna present a new angle to modernize them, why not go for it? Yeah, I wasn't keen on it, but having just enough of it there muddies the movie. Would it have been better? Probably not, but the intent would feel much more clear and who knows, maybe it was what the franchise needed to bring it to new audiences. Sometimes changes in themes and approaches can work. At the very least, I would get the film's goals, that or preferably just stick to its strength, which is what works in the movie most, so yeah, why didn't they just do that? This party's gonna be lit. Now, the weakest aspect of the movie is in its villain, Margot, played by Alice and Jenny. It almost feels like they're trying to recapture the magic Joan Cusack provided on the Addams Family values. As Margot is this preppy home makeover lady hosting her reality show, and I suppose running the town as well. Anyway, she wants to make everything pretty and normal, tries to give the Adams a home makeover, but when they decline, decides to go all Gaston on them by getting the town to attack them as the rest of the family visits. Look, I get the idea behind it, get a preppy lady to oppose the Adams, it's a neat idea for a cinematic villain and it asks the audience who the real monster is. But aside from the fact that Joan Cusack already did that and much better, there's not much to her opposing the Adams other than they're weird. Which fine, that fits with the angle they're going for, but it's hardly her focus until the extended family shows up. This party's gonna be lit. Worst still is to make her appear weird for the movies. See, we all have weird interests. Moment. The movie shows she's been spying on the whole town via hidden cameras, which aside from being very illegal, is just all kinds of wrong, and apparently everyone lets her off the hook easy, because I guess Fester has a thing for her, and the sequel will find out she's after his wealth, right? I don't know. She's just another mess of a confusing choice in a movie that already had confusing choices in its narratives, and I didn't really care for her presence. This party's gonna be lit. No, of course not. Like I said before, the cast is great and the animation complements them. Honestly, I did have a lot of fun throughout the movie. It's just sadly a movie where the negative stuck out so much, it was hard not to bring them up. Look, I wouldn't mind watching this again, and I'm curious where to go with the sequel. I just wish the aspects that didn't work didn't stick out as much. It's kind of like seeing a bowl full of candy, and randomly you get things like apples or raisins there. Sure, they're healthier, and as we face issues with obesity, it's probably better that we eat those. Thing is, they mixed it with candy, and you're likely going to eat both types of treats, and it'll just feel like a confusing mess. One or the other would have worked better. The classic bowl of candy you love, or a healthy snack bowl you might not want, but probably works better for you. Look, I know my metaphor isn't good, but there's only so many ways I can say that this movie is good when it's focused on the Addams Family doing their typical stuff, and bad when it tries a new approach. Though, it could have been better if they focused on working that new approach. It's pretty much at its worst when it doesn't know whether to be classic or new Addams. Bottom line... I enjoyed this movie. It had funny jokes, the cast is great, the animation looks neat, and as a way of bringing the Addams to the modern world, it works when they utilize the franchise strengths, but flops when it tries bringing new messages and themes to modernize the family. I get rich families aren't exactly popular, especially now, but sometimes what works is what works. I recommend this for fans of the Addams Family, though 
just be aware that parts of it won't be the stuff you love. And it's fun for the audiences looking for a substitute for the Hotel Transylvania movies. But otherwise, you don't have to rush to watch this one. It's a unique film that is ruined when it tries to be generic. If a Majerka lasts for more than four hours, contact your doctor. Okay, how would I have fixed it? Normally in reviews, you don't try to fix movies. But this is only kind of a review, so here goes. Make the Mazurka stuff the A-plot. It was more interesting, it felt like a neat exploration of the Adams culture. It would have been better. Make the Adams aware of the people living nearby, have the town already aware of them, and introduce the villain Margot as an out-of-towner whose reality show needs a boost, so she decides to film the Adams family. Think of it as her trying to make money by essentially filming a rich family's lifestyle, but instead of the Kardashians or whoever, it's the Adams. Boom. Modern joke about the rich, but instead of whiny first world problems, they're weird. Have the Adams insist they're a boring family because they think they're normal, so they only let them film the house once for kicks. It becomes a rating set, so Margot tries to kidnap the family to bank off them, but the Adams are of course more focused on the Mazurka, to the point that they don't even notice Margot's crew being there, and often being hurt or maimed by the Adams or their weird house. I sincerely believe that this would make for a better movie the culture of the Adams, the modern angle, and the Adams assuming they're normal. At least it's the basic idea I had for this. Thanks for watching and sorry if I seemed a little too harsh on the movie. I do enjoy it, it's just one that has a lot of problems. This party's gonna be lit. <laughs> this party's gonna be lit.